Hello, BookTube. I've got a little bit of mail for you today on a Saturday that is just what you expect from New England in autumn at the end of September. <laughs> 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 85% humidity, bright, brassy sunlight. The type of day where, as you often do in autumn in New England, you do all of your filming and your errands early in the day before the heat really builds in, and you move your filming location to a corner of your little book room because it's best for the air conditioning. Yeah, that's just perfectly natural <laughs> for, for late September in Boston. Uh, but uh, I've got a little mail, but unfortunately I don't have a, a large number of videos. I don't have a bombardment of videos for you. I've got the usual million things I want to say. Uh, but the last night's reading got away from me. I, uh, I assembled a whole bunch of reading, including a whole bunch of BookTube-related reading, and I didn't do a lot of it. I instead, I, I got sucked into something else and read all night long. It was a merry, merry, wonderful night of reading, but it, it wasn't booktube or booktube adjacent, unfortunately. So uh, I don't have a bunch of booktube events to talk about anyway. And also, the day has got away from me as well, as these bright midsummer days will do. <laughs> you know, these big, humid, incredibly humid, unbelievably soppingly humid, hot summer days they'll tend to get away from you. So this is going to have to be a low-yield day as far as videos go. I'm hoping that this new arrangement works. I'm hoping that it that it looks good and that it sounds good. I can't help but think that the at least the audio will be better because I am I am in a corner surrounded on all sides by books. That's That's got to be funneling sound. But I'm also using a different machine, so who knows what the results will be like. I'm hoping that they're bearable. Uh, but we'll, we've only got a couple of videos to do anyway, so we'll do, we'll do the mail. Uh, and I did read a short book last night. I reread a short book. So uh, this first one is from uh, Amazon. I've not ordered anything from Amazon. <laughs> what is this? Is there a note? Oh, there is a note. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I swear, you people are so crazy. <laughs> you are so insane. Uh, this is a vintage paperback. Oh, this is beautiful. This is just lovely. Uh, this is a vintage classic of Christopher and His Kind by Christopher Itchwood. <laughs> Uh, with the, the red spine like this, this has an introduction by Gore Vidal. This has uh, the the cover artwork here of suntan boys in a in an endless summer. And uh, as the sender notes, uh, this is not a violation of rule number one because I know you don't have this book. <laughs> For those of you who might be new to my channel, rule number one is don't send me a book. I know I'm surrounded by books. You might think it's the most natural gift in the world, but it's a bad idea. I'm surrounded by carefully chosen books. I know exactly what I want and exactly what I don't want. And your estimate of how widely I have read and how deeply I have read and how many books I'm familiar with, I assure you, is off by orders of magnitude. <laughs> so finding a book at your bookstore or your library sale and saying, I bet Steve doesn't have this is wrong. Your assumption of that is wrong. That guess will be wrong and it'll be a waste of all our times. So I've made rule number one right from the beginning on this channel. Don't send me a book uh, with one proviso, which is that you can, of course, send me a book if you clear it with me ahead of time. If you get over your stupid Protestant predilection for not spoiling the surprise, if you if you show me pictures, if you talk about it ahead of time, well, fine, then you can send me a book if I want it. If you show me something that I want, I will gladly squeal and ask for it. Uh, b believe it or not, that is not the proviso <laughs> that, 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 is, that this book is getting out of the wire. This book is getting out of the wire because the sender knows perfectly well that I don't have a copy because I just I just got a copy of this uh, from the Brattle like a month ago on this channel. I showed it. I, I lulled it on this channel. It was a hardcover. It didn't look like this. Uh, and the reason that the sender knows that I don't have a copy of this book is because I sent it to him. <laughs> I sent it to him. Of course I did. <laughs> he emailed me and said, I, I loved your latest, your latest Brattle Hall, especially Christopher and His Kind. I read that book years ago and loved it. Oh my God, how I would love to have uh, a copy of it. 
And I did what I always do. I said, well, I'll send it to you. Give me a mailing address and I'll send it to you. And after a little hemming and hawing, I did. And that is how the sender knows that I don't have a copy of this book. And this is not the copy that I sent. If you go back and find that video, you'll see that I found a very stately hardcover. Uh, with no illustration at all. This is a trade paperback with an illustration. And it's just going to encourage the rest of you. But the sender was right. This is wonderful. <laughs> what a wonderful thing. I prefer this in every way to the hardcover that I sent. So... <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, it's just amazing. Someone, someone knows that I don't have a copy of the book. Very clever. Yes, I don't have a copy. Well, now I do. Uh, and I won't be sending this one away. Because it's a gift. And I tend not to do that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. If you're watching, I'll send an email. Uh, but thank you. Uh, okay, so this next one comes out in January of next year. So I don't need to... Uh, I don't need to think about it. Oh, a lovely, colorful thing here. This is a novel by Emma Knight. It is called The Life Cycle of the Common Octopus. Comes out in January. Um, arriving at the University of Edinburgh for her first term, Penn knows her divorced parents back in Canada are hiding something from her. She believes she'll find the answer here in Scotland, where an old friend of her father's, now a famous writer known as Lord Lennox, lives. When she is invited to spend the weekend at Lennox's century-old estate with his enveloping, fascinating family, Penn begins to unravel her parent's secret just as she's falling in love for the first time. Hmm. Uh, as she experiences the sharp shock of adulthood, she learns to rely on herself as never before. A rich and rewarding novel of campus life, of sexual awakening, and ultimately of the many ways women can become mothers in this world, the life cycle of the common octopus asks to what extent we need to look back in order to move forward. Uh, okay. Uh, this, I'm told, is the author's first novel. That is wonderful. It is, this is what? Uh, Viking? A beautiful hardcover, with a beautiful design from a major press of, of her debut novel. That is fantastic. Uh, Emma Knight is an author, journalist, and entrepreneur. And her writing about books, maternal health, and more has appeared in Literary Hub, British Vogue, The Globe and Mail, and The Walrus. And she lives in Toronto with her family. And this is her first book. Uh, and Penn has a weirdly androgynous name. So I'm assuming that the, the secret that her parents are hiding and the love that she discovers for the first time and the coming of age and the secret of Lord Lennox, I'm assuming that all of it down to the last decimal point is lesbian. <laughs> all, just all of it, just everything, including all of the common octopuses that are mentioned in this book. I'm assuming that, it, that this is just a, a breeder-free book, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I would think that if I were wrong, uh, the cover copy would mention the sex of her love interest. Uh, and it doesn't. It rather rather ostentatiously doesn't. So I, I could be wrong. <laughs> we will see. I'm going to read it anyway and find out. Uh, uh, and the good for her. I mean, how wonderful. Uh, your debut from Viking. That is great. Uh, and then we have a box. Uh, it's the only box today. It's the last of this little mail haul. Uh, this little... I didn't want to make no videos today. I made a video about uh, the short book that I reread last night. But I, I didn't want to just disappear completely. So, uh, let's see what this one is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh my. All right. Uh, all right. I'm going to try and calm myself down here. <laughs> uh, this is by Sarah Charles and it is called the medieval scriptorium making books in the middle ages. <laughs> oh my. Steve is pleased. Um, uh, this comes out in late October, uh, and I will uh, I will probably talk about it again or write about it closer to late October. Of course, late October, I will still be piling in all the errands early as possible before the day's heat really builds in, day's heat and humidity. Uh, and I'll be looking at various corners of Hyde Cottage that work best for the AC unit to be running, uh, because it will be 85 degrees with 85% humidity in late October, just like it is in late September, and as it will be in late November. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I can live that way, I suppose. Uh, this book 
take the reader on an immersive journey through medieval manuscript production in the Latin Christian world. Each chapter opens with a lively vignette by a medieval narrator, including a parchment maker, scribe, and illuminator, introducing various aspects of manuscript production. Okay, so is that historical fiction? We don't have we don't have a whole lot. Let's let's take a look and see. Let's find out. Each chapter begins with a historical vignette. Yeah, it looks like each chapter starts off rather inventively with historical fiction. Wouldn't that be interesting? Uh, the author poses the question, what actually is a scriptorium? And explores the development of the medieval scriptorium from its early Christian beginnings through to its eventual decline and the growth of the printing press. With the written word at the very heart of the Christian monastic movement, we see the immense amount of labor, planning, and networks needed to produce each manuscript. By tapping into these processes and procedures, this book helps us to experience medieval life through the lens of a manuscript maker. Uh, fantastic. Uh, okay. Uh, this, and according to the, uh, the author note, the author works and studies at Senate House, University of London, and has previously written other books on the history of the book, which is a, a wonderful field. So fantastic. The medieval scriptorium. How oh, incredible. <laughs> All right. So uh, this was an interesting mail. So we have the medieval scriptorium. Uh, I must read for Steve. I will, I will try to review this late in October. I will, of course, work on it early in the morning so I don't overheat. Uh, we have a debut novel, which I love because it's, it's, it's just a blank slate. You don't know what the author is doing. You don't know what they're going to do. What in here is an amazing stylistic insight and what is an authorial tick that by uh, novel number six you're going to be sick of? <laughs> uh, what are the author's preoccupations? An author doesn't have to be so dumb or programmatic as to write on themes. Most authors don't anymore. But authors will have their preoccupations. They will have ideas that they think that keep drawing them. And usually they will return to those ideas in book after book. But with the first book, it's all fresh. It's all as, as fresh and alluring, as glowing as a, as a field covered in new snow. Can't wait to see. Uh, can't wait to see what that'll be like. Uh, and finally, and finally the, the book of the week, uh, Christopher and His Kind, which is Christopher Isherwood's... Uh, it's an amazing book. It is the best thing that he wrote. And one of you decided that the best possible response to me sending you my copy of this book was to get Amazon to send me a copy of this book, which you people are crazy. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just send a copy to yourself if you didn't have a copy? Why would you do this for me <laughs> as opposed to for yourself? <laughs> so anyway, maybe it's just that you, I'm sure that it is just that you want it all to be gifts given in friendship, which I totally understand. That does make everything more valuable. But this is so strange. You are all so weird. <laughs> uh, so that is our mail haul for today. Uh, debut fiction and a couple of other great books. So that that's going to have to do it for videos for today. Unfortunately, it's not going to be an eight video day. It's not even going to be a four video day. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but but uh, although I have to wrap this up for now, I will be back. <laughs> Presumably less preoccupied tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll see you then. Thank you, book two.